41. I, can you draw out Leviathan with a hook? In other words, in other words, when God comes, when God comes looking for us, he comes, it, he goes with a fishing pole because God is outside. We are all under the sea, okay? We are even physically, we're under the sea. We're, we're in a water world. So the Lord Jesus is up here somewhere. When he comes looking for us, he goes with a fishing pole into the sea. Can you, how do you get rid of, the question is, how do you get rid of Leviathan? He is a fish. He is in the water of this world. Do you go fishing for Leviathan and pull him out with a hook? Okay. Or can you tie a cord okay, uh, to his tongue? And we found out that the cord basically is the umbilical cord of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're learning that from the millstone dream. Can you get him out with the umbilical cord of the Lord Jesus Christ by letting it down into the black hole where we are? Can you put a hook in his nose? And the word nose refers to, um, from a Kabbalistic point of view, uh, the nose is, uh, is the ear and pain, okay, which is, um, for the purposes of this message, I, I will say on the level of the Son of God without getting into a whole Kabbalistic exhortation there. Okay. Can you put a hook through the, 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 now this Leviathan, he has his own, his own ten separate. This Leviathan has his own ten separate. So, uh, how, how do you get him out? Do you, do you hook the son of the, of the serpent? So in the midst of this Leviathan, he has ten serpents, he has uh, ten separate. So there's a, a grandfather, a father, a mother, a son, and a, a daughter, okay? So the son would be the no representative of the nose. How do you get, how do we get rid of this Leviathan, okay? Yeah. Or do you pull him out with a fishing pole, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you pull him out with the umbilical cord of the Lord Jesus Christ that you let down into the hole, okay? And we know in the millstone dream, that's the umbilical cord of the Lord Jesus Christ descending into the hole. So that's a spiritual principle that that's coming. Do you, do you, do you put a hook in the part of him that's the son of the snake? You know? Or do you bore his jaw through with a thorn? Now that's really interesting because in the millstone dream, the seed is coming and there's a hole bored in that seed. There's a hole bored in it. So... What is the Lord telling us here that will apply to the millstone dream here? Or bore, his, or bore his jaw through with a thorn. To be honest with you, I don't have the revelation on the hole that's bored into the sea in the millstone dream. And if there's something here that I'm supposed to see, I ask the Lord to show me because I don't see it. I still don't see it. A thorn, the thorn is a judgment. Do you bore a hole through his jaw? Huh. I don't know. Will he make supplications unto you? Is he going to be nice to you when you approach him? Will he speak soft words to you? Is he going to be um, a phony? Is he, going to, is he going to put on a false face? Will he even make a covenant with you? Will he be a phony Christian or a phony Hebrew? Will he make a covenant with you? Will he claim to be a righteous man? Will you take him for a servant forever and never make him into a son? So you need to understand that what we're being taught today is that this giant that's born, it's a, we, from the one point of view, I'm telling you, we are just the house that these principalities dwell in. But from the other, from the, from the spiritual height, okay, we are just the house that the angel and his son, the giant, dwell in. But from, when, the, when you're looking from the view of this world, the, all you can see is us. So we're everything. We are the giant, we're the evil angel, we're, we're the house, we are the giant, looking at it from the perspective of this world. It's us. Okay. So this is, how, this is what the Lord is saying to him. He's talking about Christians, well, his Old Testament is talking about Jews. Can he, can he, can he be an Israelite? Can, can this Leviathan, this wicked thing, can he actually make a covenant with you? <coughs> can he be an Israelite? Is he going to appear to be humble to you? How do, I, how do I recognize Leviathan in a man? How do I recognize Christ in the man? How do I recognize the good giant Elijah in a man? How do I recognize Leviathan, the bad giant, in a man? 
Not only does he no longer have a gigantic size, but on the other side of the foot, everyone was gigantic. So giant means a, a great and powerful one in the spiritual dimension. How will you recognize him? By the nail polish that he wears, by the way he cuts his hair, but, but whether or not he humbles himself and he speaks softly to you, whether or not he's willing to make a covenant with you. You know, covenants can be broken, brethren. Will you take him for a servant forever? So obviously this book of Job is speaking about, about national Israel, who was a servant. Okay, today this is the ministry of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we all have the potential to be sons because the covenant that God, that Jehovah is making, that has made with us today is the covenant of his Son. That means we are all sons, first by faith and then by reality. Will you play with him as with a bird? Or will you bind him for thy maidens? I'm not really sure what that means. Well, that word play in the Hebrew uh, usually means what? Play war games. It doesn't mean play stickball. It means play war games. So when God, when, if God were to go to war with Leviathan, it would be playing because there's really no contest. Will you actually go along with this Leviathan who actually thinks he can make war against God? As with a bird, birds are the, are the young Shekinahs, the young spiritual, the young spiritual Israelites. And which we are told in the, in the history books that the different tribes engaged in war, war games, I think in the days of David. So will you actually engage in some kind of warfare? And uh, with, with this baby bird that, it's like a mouse shaking his stick at a giant. Are you actually going to be engaged in that? Or will you bind him for your maidens? I'm not sure what that means. Or shall the companions make a banquet for him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Okay. The companions, that, the companions are the companions of the bridegroom, usually. So this is talking about people with spiritual power. Are they going to actually catch him and eat him? Are they going to cook him and eat him? Will they part him amongst the merchants? That sounds like when they parted uh, Jesus' garment. So this is all for Israel, brethren. I mean, what are we going to do with this Leviathan? Okay. How do we get rid of him? He's been born in Israel. How do we get rid of him? Verse 7. Can you fill his skin with barbed iron? Can we throw uh, arrows down, arrows or hooks down him and get it in his skin and pull him out? Or his head with fish spears? Lay your hand upon him, remember the battle, and do no more. Lay your hand upon him, put your mind upon him, recognize him, remember that you're in a war with him, and don't do any more than that because you cannot do any of the things not, that uh, laid out in verses 1 through 7. You cannot do any of those things. You cannot get rid of him by any of those methods. So just recognize him, lay your hands upon him, let your mind know that he's there. And remember that he's your enemy. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, that we will be glorified. He has no hope. He gives you no hope. He cannot give you immortality. He cannot give you life. He cannot heal you. He's ruling and reigning through your mind and your body. And you have no hope of living in him. Shall no one be cast, shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? I guess it means that, I'm not sure what that means, just the sight of him is terrifying. Verse 10, none is so fierce that dare, dare stir him up. And brother, brother, that is true. You look at somebody that's known for rages, and the average person will be walking on eggshells around them. Just don't. Just don't start one of your rages. Just don't. Just don't. Just stay quiet. Just stay quiet. There's someone in my life that I feel that way about right now. Don't stir them up. Don't stir them up. Okay. Don't say anything that will stir them up. None, none is so fierce that they dare to stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? No, is that the Lord talking? 
who then is able to stand before me, who hath prevented me that I should repay him. Whosoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I guess this is Jehovah speaking. If no one is fierce enough to dare stir him up, who is able to stand up before me and take out this Leviathan? Who in Israel, my nation, who is going to take out Leviathan? No one's afraid to stir him up. I mean, no one is, no one is brave enough to stir him up. Jehovah is saying, what am I going to do with this Leviathan that's in Israel? What has prevented me that I should repay him? Why haven't I paid him back for the wickedness that he's done? Whatsoever under heaven, whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. I'm not going to cover him up. I'm going to expose him. You can, you can walk softly before me. You can look like you're religious. You can look like you're spiritual. I am going to expose you. Verse 14, who can open the doors of his face, face being personality? Who can reveal his true personality, the one that looks so pious behind his daily prayers? Who's going to reveal the truth of his personality? His teeth are terrible round about, and the teeth typify Satan. He's a terrible one in this world. 15, his scales are his pride shut up together as with a close seal. Leviathan is, is defensed. You try, having a, you try having an honest discussion with someone who's manifesting out of Leviathan, you cannot get through to them. No matter what you say, they will turn it right back on you and make you the guilty, you're the guilty or the victim or the, and make themselves great. It's very hard having an honest relationship with someone that's defensed in pride. One is so near to the other that no air can come between them. Even the Spirit of God cannot break down the elements of his pride. He's that defensed. He's innocent and you are guilty. And there's no two ways about it. Someone said to me the other day, my husband abuses me all the time. He's mad at me all the time. Well, most of the time he's mad at me. I said, well, why, why is he mad at you all the time? She said, I don't know. She has no idea he's mad at her all the time, and she has no idea why he's mad at her. What kind of a marriage is this? She has no idea why he's mad at her. They are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. These are all the excuses and the justifications that someone will have for not, for not making themselves vulnerable, for not letting themselves be exposed, for not letting you see who they really are. You cannot have a relationship or a conversation with someone that will not let you see who they really are or what they're really thinking or feeling. 18, by his nessings, that means sneeze. I don't really know what that sneeze means, but I've wondered. It was uh, Elisha, I believe, that sneezed. Did the, did the boy sneeze that he brought back to life? I guess the boy that he brought back to life sneezed. By his sneezing, a light doth shine. I don't know what that means. Or something comes into this world. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. His eyes are like eyelids. He covers over the eyelids of the morning. His eyes are like the eyelids that cover over the morning. The morning is, is Jesus. He's the morning star. His eyes act like eyelids. In other words, his eyes cover over the eyes of the spirit and become an eyelid to the eye of the spirit so that you cannot see truth. Out of his mouth goes burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. All that I know is the, the phrase that someone was a burning lamp. I think it was John. He was, in a, he was a burning lamp and he was taken out of this world. So out of his mouth goes, goes words that make himself a great one like John was, except that it's a lie. So Leviathan builds himself up and makes himself a great one. Out of his nostrils goes smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. I'm not sure what to say about that, but the nostrils refer to the Son of God again, and the smoke usually means the Holy Spirit. 
So I guess it means a false Holy Spirit. A false Holy Spirit is associated with pride. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goes out of his mouth. His breath kindles coals. Coals usually represents the sons of God. There's a piece of partially burnt wood that, that you burn incense on it. So again, I would say he's the counterfeit Holy Spirit. And he's judgment. A flame goes out of his mouth. He's judgment. He's the judgment of the sowing and reaping judgment to the sons of God. He sets the coals on fire. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow was turned into joy before him. That's a big one. His neck, the neck is a very powerful spiritual part of us. We preach out of, whoever preaches out of his neck exercises spiritual power uh, uh, without, uh, without paraphernalia, just in your word. That's a powerful person. So he's very strong in that high level of spiritual power. He's powerful enough, listen, to turn sorrow into joy. He will, you can punish him, you can discipline him, for which he should be sorrowful, and he can turn it into something great. He will not receive punishment. Leviathan will not be corrected. You can, do, you can punish them and discipline them, take anything away from them, and they'll tell you they're having a wonderful day. You have not hurt them or touched them at all. The flakes of his flesh <laughs> are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. I'm not sure what that means, but the parts of his mind, he's just, they're all in agreement. His heart is as firm as a stone. Pride will give you a stony heart. You don't care if the other person cries, if they're hurt, if they're, the only thing you know is self-defense. Yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. So Leviathan is the bottom millstone that doesn't move, and the top millstone grinds the grain, and the top millstone moves. So he's immovable, immovable. And that's interesting because I was listening to the book of Daniel the other day, and something like this took, well, I was going to say took place in Babylon, well, Daniel was in Babylon. The law was that once a law was passed and the, and the king approved it, it could not be repealed. Even the king could not repeal his own law. And we see what happened in Israel when John the Bat when um, Herod said to Salome, Salome, uh, tell me what you would like, and I'll give you anything up to the head of my kingdom. And she asked for the head of John the Baptist in the charger. Well, the king could have said, "Well, I'm sorry, I'm, I made, I, I, I misspoke, and I shouldn't have, I should not have made you that offer, and I'm not going to kill John the Baptist." But because of his pride, he executed John the Baptist because of his pride. Okay, so that's incredible pride that even the king cannot change his own law. Mm -hmm. And we're told in the book of Daniel mm -hmm. that with regard to, uh, to Daniel, he winds up being thrown into the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. The king himself re retires and is praying mm -hmm. that Daniel's God delivers him. Well, why don't you stop the, stop the execution? He wouldn't do it. His pride was so high. He was saying, what I have said, I have said. The same thing with uh, Pilate. I think it was Pilate when they said, uh, and the, the, the Jews said to him, well, he's not our king. And Pilate said, Pilate wrote on his grave, the king of the Jews. And the Jews said to him, he's not our king. And Pilate said, what I have said, I have said. Pride will not change his mind, even if an innocent person is being killed. When he raises up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. Not sure what that means, but of the, all of the angels and the mighty ones are afraid. He's, a, he's an awesome enemy. I, don't take on pride unless it's the Lord. Okay, I wouldn't do that. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. I'm not sure what that means. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold. The spear of the dart, Mother Harbajan. You just, you just can't hurt the guy. The guy just won't hurt, won't be hurt. My father used to talk about people like that. He used to sell them. He used to call them, well, whatever you call them. 
He said, there's nothing you can do with these people. You just have to kill them. Well, he was talking about legally. He was a soldier, my father. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. You cannot frighten him enough. You cannot make him run. And the weapons you sling at him, they become nothing. They cannot hurt him. The man cannot be hurt. The man, the man defense to pride cannot be hurt. You cannot wound him. He's not ashamed. He, according to the scripture, he has a harlot's forehead. He cannot be ashamed into admitting that he's wrong. He's literally untouchable. Darts are counted as stubble. He laughs at the shaking of a spear. He's laughing at all of these weapons. Sharp stones are under him. He spreads sharp pointed things about the mire. He's surrounded by sharp pointed things. And we see that he's in clay. He's, this is a Leviathan in a man. He spread the sharp pointed things upon the mire, upon his uh, clay form. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He makes the deep, I guess that's the, wa the waters of the soul, to boil like a pot. That's interesting because Jesus said that he wanted us boil boiling. Okay. He wanted us either boiling or not doing anything, but should, we should not be lukewarm. So he wants, his, he wants spiritual activity and righteousness. But this is spiritual activity that's not in righteousness. And he make it this sea like a pot of ointment. Well, he does produce healing, a false healing. If that's what that means. He make it the path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Not sure what that means. Upon earth there is not his like who was made without fear. Nothing frightens him. He beholdeth all things high. All high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. He's afraid of nothing. I know a few people like that. Very sad. Can't reach them.